Okay, kids, Special Agent Beth here, and I'm here to give you agent training. Welcome to Agents in Action. We've got a 13-week course where we're going to train you to be special agents. What's a special agent, you ask? Well, some organizations have secret agents, and they don't want you to know what they're doing. They're spies, and they don't want you to know what's going on because they're acting in secret. We're not secret agents. We're special agents, which means we have special tasks. And it's okay if everybody knows what we're doing, because we've got a special job to do. In fact, we want the world to know what our job is. Now let me tell you why. First of all, who are we agents for? We're agents for God. And God loves this world. And we're his agents in the world to tell the world about God's love. And in order to do that, people have to know. And Jesus even said, they'll know that you love me by your love for others. So our lives are supposed to be different. When we become Christians, we become God's special agents. And our lives are supposed to be different than everybody else's. Well, what does that look like? And what does that look like for kids versus for grown-ups? So we're gonna spend 13 weeks and I'm gonna train you how to be God's special agents in this world for you kids. Each week we'll have a different special mission. And we're gonna hear about what we can do and get some ideas on how we can show God's love in this world. So let's start off today. Here's our special mission for today. Now first I'm gonna tell you a story and then we're gonna open our envelope and we're gonna see what the special mission is. But let me tell you a story to kind of get you thinking about it and to see if you can guess what our story, or what our special mission is. Okay, so this story happened like 4,000 years ago. There was a man named Abraham. Now, God changed his name to Abraham later, but before he was called Abraham, he was called Abram. And his wife, Sarah, had her name changed too. So before she was Sarah, she was called Sarai. So we had Sarai and Abram. And they lived far, far away. And one day God came to them and said, Abraham, I want you to pack up everything you have and I want you to go someplace. And Abraham says, where? Where are, you gonna, where are we gonna go? And God says, I'll show you, don't worry. Just, just pack up and go. What? Pack up everything and go, but you don't know where you're gonna go? That sounds kind of scary. But Abraham had faith. So he trusted God, he packed everything up and he took his whole household and his wife and they had animals and they packed everything up and they started taking a trip and they were just following where God would tell them to go. And one of the people who came with them, who's really important in our story, his name was Lot. And he was Abraham's nephew because Abraham was 75 when this happened. So Abraham and Lot and Lot's whole family and Abraham and Sarah didn't, and, and Sarah didn't have any kids. So they, they went and they're, they're heading off. And it takes them a really long time. We're talking years to get there. And in that time, they've got all their animals with them, their sheep and their goats and their camels and their donkeys. And their sheep and their goats and their camels and their donkeys keep having babies and having more and more. And before they know it, they're this huge group with all these animals. And back then, animals were wealth. That was, they didn't have money like we do. Um, some cities did, but, but they would use their animals and they would trade. They would trade their skins for, for clothing and for tents and for saddles and things. And they would trade their meat for food. So animals were wealth. So Abraham had all this wealth. And they travel and travel and travel. And finally, God says, okay, here we are. And they come to a land called Canaan. And so God said, this, is where we're gonna be. And they looked around and Lot had all his animals and Abraham had all his animals and their, their, their shepherds were starting to fight over where the animals were gonna graze because they needed a grazing land, you know, where they eat the grass. And so they were starting to fight over it and Abraham's like, okay, let's not fight over this. I tell you what, Lot, you look, you look, look at all this land and you pick, you pick which way you wanna go and you, where you're gonna settle. You can go that way and I'll go that way. Or you can go that way and I'll go that way, but you choose. You choose and I'll take the other. And so Lot looked around and he, 
he noticed that, oh, over there is lush and nice, and there's some big cities over there that he can trade with, and oh, it's just fertile land over there, and oh, over there is a little bit more hilly, and eh. so he goes this way. He chooses what he thinks is the nice one. And Abraham says, fine, I'm, I'm happy for you. Go that way. And God said, Abraham, look around. I'm going to give you all of it. I'm going to give all of it to your family. And through you, I'm going to bless the whole world. Which is really cool because Abraham is Jesus' great, 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 great. I lost count of how many greats. Lots of greats. Grandfather. And that's what he meant is through you I'll bless the whole world. Through you I'm going to bring my salvation plan to fruition and make it happen. And it's going to be right here in this land. And if you watched our What's in the Bible series last year, you know why it was important. It was on a main training route. And, and by having Jesus come there, the gospel got spread really quickly throughout the entire world. So this was an important place. And God gave it to Abraham and said, it's yours. And I'm going to bless you. So that's our story. What does that have to do with being a special agent and our special mission? That is a great question. Let's look in our envelope and see if we can figure out how that applies to our lives, how we should live based on that story, what it teaches us about how we should live and love others. So let's take a look. Let's see. Okay. Uh, well, this is confusing. Can you see this? I'll blow up a picture in just a minute, but it's just a bunch of scribbles. It's just a bunch of scribbles. Oh my goodness, how can we figure out what our secret mission is, our special mission, not secret, it's not a secret, we want the world to know. How can we figure out what our special mission is when we can't even read it? Well, I, in my pocket, have my special mission decoder card. And let me zoom in and I'll show you how it works. Okay, so here's our card up close. What does that say? That's just bizarre. I can't read that. So I've got my decoder. Watch this. I'm going to put it in front. And suddenly I can read it. It's a little hard to read. It's a little fuzzy through there. But it says unselfish service. Unselfish service. So not thinking about ourselves, but thinking about other people's needs. Unselfish service. That is what God calls us to, is to serve others without being like, oh, but I wanted that. Well, what does that look like? Like, let's talk about some examples. So one example from my life, I play a lot of games. I love playing games, it's so much fun. And sometimes we're getting a game all set up and I'm really excited, and how can I unselfishly serve? I can say, hey, would you like to go first? Sometimes we get so excited and we want to go first because we're so excited and we feel like we've got an advantage if we go first. But sometimes we just need to say, hey, you go first. Or maybe there's only two pieces of cake left and there's three of you, you're, you and your brother and your sister, and you all want a piece of cake, but there's only three pieces left. And so you say, oh, it's okay. You have those, even though you really want it. And it's hard, it's really hard. I can think of another example from when I was a kid. My best friend and I would get together to play and I would wanna play one thing and she would wanna play another. And so sometimes we would start to argue about it. And we had to just say, okay, let's play what you want today. And next time we'll play what I want. And we just had to, instead of being selfish, and wanting what we wanted, we had to say, okay, I'm gonna be unselfish and I'm gonna let you choose what we do. And it's hard, it is so hard to do that. But God calls us to be unselfish. He calls us to think of other people before ourselves. That doesn't mean that what we want isn't important, but it means we need to think about other people and we need to make sure and take care of them. And it's hard, especially with our siblings, but God wants us to try our best to be unselfish servants. Okay, I'll see you next week when we get to find out what our special mission number two is.